Greetings, I'm Rob Chappas, and welcome to another day where I do random things. Today, I'm actually going to go and see Bruce at Water Bear. I've got him a little fun toy. I've got you a little present. Oh. Let's go into a bright room. Well, I like the box already. Yeah. <laughs> it's, um, it's got a zoo drive. I've actually got two of them. And they were both made for me. And I kind of thought, well, I've got two. I don't need to. And uh, I think you'll like it because it's a crazy, dirty, yeah, yeah. fuzzy wow. overdrive thing. Literally. Happy Wednesday. Let me say, thank you so much for that. That's a touring cab. This is not the magic cab. No, that's just, um, I got that off Nashville Pussy. <laughs> and it's, um, it's got like speakers in that won't blow up. Right. <laughs> Boom. Sign the map. Hello, Simon. Hey, how's it going? Well, you, you, I've met you before. How are you doing? Oh, what is that? <laughs> it's called a zoo drive. I don't know. Well, let's. Um, it's dirtier than a zookeeper's boot. They are doing the meditation thing right now. Are they really? The room looks awesome. Okay. So. I like shred in one room and meditation in the other room. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's the many, many varied faces of water bear. Yeah. We're about to go and see a mindfulness and meditation class. So I'm leading a nice mindfulness session to let students create a little bit of space for themselves to calm and relax and find a bit of silence. We work quite a lot with the breath and different techniques to help them with day-to-day -day life. So and are you finding that this is the kind of thing that students request or need or? Oh, 100%. I work quite a lot in schools, so um, I think mindfulness is such a key part of life today because everything's so hectic. So it's really important to find this space to do yeah. this. Yeah, I think it's very important. <laughs> no, nobody will believe this because I've never mentioned this, but I did contemporary dance for five oh, no years. No way, where did and, you do it? And I auditioned for the wrong bear. No way, yeah, I, I um, yeah, a Different so, life. Yeah, cool. So we did, uh, we did quite a lot of release and stuff. What technique or cunning? I did a lot of carrying women. Okay, when you're so a six foot guy. Pelvis way yeah. down. And, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> One of the online students. What's this guy's name? Uh, the, the three that I think any musician, it happens every day that someone contacts me, yeah. the band, and someone's got an issue with anxiety or mental health, or sure. got someone in their band, literally every day. Are these are the um, three books that you recommend well, for the, anyone? I think th these ones really work for me, and the reason is, I'll tell you why. It's, it's the same stuff that people have been talking about for thousands of years. It's the human condition, overthinking and all that. Yeah. Musicians seem to, they do seem to get it worse than other people. And there was a statistic from a music charity that said uh, creatives were three times more likely to get mental health. I issues. wonder if it's the other way around and that we are creatives because we have something in us that needs to be catharsized yeah. or purged or, or got out of us. I think that's right. And while we're doing that, we're all right. And then yeah. it's the rest of the life that, that is the problem for a lot of musicians, you know? Yeah. And I know you've spoken about that and you spoke about it with Graham, uh, Graham Mack. Yeah, yeah. And it's very, very common, but super common with people. I think there's, there is a particular kind of pressure at that stage when you're doing a degree and your A-levels, you know, for young people. You're finding your place in the world and the way mod the modern world is, is more pressurised. So it seems to come to a head, you know, at that age. I think it's really cool that you are bringing people in to learn about music and then actually caring about how they think. Well, well. That, I mean, you, you express what's going on here, don't you? So, yeah. you know, we all know we play best when we're not thinking. Oh, yeah. So yeah, this totally. is about accessing that and yeah. also just having a nicer time because what's the point of, a, a, you know, climbing the top of the mountain and getting this great music career if, um, if it doesn't make you happy? You 100%. Know? Some people have occasionally said, is education even relevant to the music industry? You know, mm. do, do you need to have a qualification? Yeah. Uh, you know, is it important? Yeah. You know, isn't rock and roll about not having a degree or not having, yes, you, know, yes, yes. you know, higher education? And then it occurred to me, and I don't think I've ever said this, yeah. but every single member of every band I'm in has either yeah. a degree in, in music, as in guitar playing or bass or performance or, yeah. or production, or they've done higher education. Most of the people on the festival stages these days yeah. have come through through 
some school or other, because I suppose that's just, you know, you're just going to, aren't you, if you're really into music and you... You're well, if you want to have two, three years or whatever it is of just absolute focus on, on being the best that you can, you probably want to go and do higher education. But here's the thing, Rob. Um, I think as someone who provides higher education, you've got to be very clear on what your job is because it's not to tell people how to play. And I think that's why music education has gone a bit squiffy in the past because you don't want to, you don't want to spawn a generation of Paul Gilbert-style players to go into the ether. Or maybe, maybe do. <laughs> well, yeah, we love Paul Gilbert, um, but Paul Gilbert's doing his thing, you know. Yeah. So there's only one Paul Gilbert. It's about art and craft. So, yeah. you know, it's learning the guitar neck inside out, learning how the thing works, but how you express yourself on the instrument, and to a certain degree, how you actually finesse and design your own career. Everyone's an individual. So it's about that, finding your own voice on the instrument. So, you know, what I've always tried to do is to... There's this little dial between art school and conservatoire. Yeah. Conservatoire is like the classical model. It's all about technique and, you know, which we, we like that stuff. But I love the Ramones, uh, Nirvana, Bob Dylan, music that a lot of people would maybe be a bit sniffy at because it looks simple on paper, but it ain't simple. No, it's not. So that's where the, a lot of the magic is in the art school end. Yeah. It? And Dennis, oh Dennis uses the variac type, it's the voltage changes. Yeah. So you get more gain as there's less voltage going in, it's like Van Halen 1. So you oh. get a little bit of that brown burning power amp plexi thing. The big heads are over there, um, so it does, there's a 50 watt and yeah, four 50 watt versions of the same thing over there, and they move a bit of air. They do. And have you just been teaching the diatonic harmonic minor scale? No, actually. But I, I just I have that there to scare the students when they come in. Right, yeah. <laughs> Bruce, how the hell have you done this to a boss pedal? Just old. Nobody manages to do this to a boss pedal. It's very old, <laughs> but it sounds awesome. <laughs> Bruce is about to show me something that I've never tried before that I'm quite excited about. It's an amp coffin by speaker Grossman. Coffin. Speaker coffin. Speaker, speaker coffin. Well, so it's a box with a speaker built in and a microphone and it's sealed so that the sound doesn't escape and I'm going to run this little RD1 all the way through it and I'm going to drive it really hard and see how it sounds and I'm pretty excited to be honest with you. It, that's a copy of a guitar that was cobbled together in the 80s. Right. Criticality of what that's made of. Do you think that makes a big difference? A huge difference. So what's this one made of? Uh, steel, I think, that one. Or heavy aluminium, I don't know. But I had brass in it and it was a disaster. Really? Yeah, it sounded awful. And then the weight of the machine ends was also very important for the mid-range. Um, if you put, if I originally had some light vintage ones on and it sounded like Mark Knopfler and I wanted Hendrix. Right. Weighty machine head suddenly mid range comes back. Interesting. And that's why people bolt on those brass things on the top. You know, yeah, yeah. You know, but you can do it to your own guitar. You cable tie a lump of brass to your headstock or anything that weighs. Yeah. You'll suddenly find there's more mid range comes out right. of the guitar. Let's plug it in. That's loud enough for that speaker to be complaining. So lift the lid. I'm getting one. That's unbelievable. Right, well, if you just keep playing, I'll lift the lid. Oh like, my God. Suddenly oh. it's like Concord. Thank you. 
It's loud enough. It's wow. loud enough that the speaker's giving out. No, I can hear yeah. the speaker going. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, that's the one um, thing you've got is um, you've only got one speaker in there, so a 100 watt head. You have to put a dummy load on it or something to stop it killing the speaker. I've never been, a, I've never, in a, other than on a stage, run this full. So it's a really interesting experience. Do you know when um, I saw Pantera play? And I know you, he uses a funny kind of transistor, he uses Randall amps, didn't he? Yeah, yeah. But what was amazing about it was it was a monstrous sound, but it was also, because it was direct, it was a DI. You had that kind of, I saw him in Hammersmith, and it just took a place apart, and they were supporting Megadeth. Right. And Megadeth sounded like little ants afterwards, you know. But that is the same thing, you get that kind of bang out the front of the PA, it's like the whole audience is right in front of your speakers, yeah. you know. <laughs> See what it sounds yeah, like. Yeah, yeah, we'll borrow it. It's that's spinning fun. out those harmonics, isn't it? You know, it really, yeah. You know, it's really great. Yeah, that's great. How exciting. Yeah. Yeah. Open your mind, and then your body will open too, <laughs> and then you'll be able to shred. <laughs> <laughs> 